It brought us blue skies in a decade full of gray ones, and it certainly held us each Tuesday night during the 1970s. Happy Days, the cultural phenomenon, brought 50s nostalgia with timeless characters, great music, and light-hearted fun. Happy Days actually had a rather, well, sad start. ABC had no interest when producer Gary Marshall created a pilot entitled New Family in Town in 1971. It surfaced the following year and aired as a failed pilot on ABC in February of 1972. It was called Love and Happy Days. A year later, the success of the film American Graffiti prompted ABC to reach out to producer Gary Marshall to rework that pilot. Marshall, a veteran comedy writer, had produced The Odd Couple, and he'd also worked on The Dick Van Dyke Show. There were several almosts as Happy Days was in the works. For starters, Marshall retitled his show Cool. He thought it accurately reflected the characters. Test audiences, though, thought the show was about smoking, since Cool was a cigarette brand. A producer suggested the simple Happy Days, since that was, after all, what they were trying to create on the silver screen. ABC was actually originally interested in a period piece about the flapper era of the 1920s. Marshall said he'd only do the show if it could be set during a period he was familiar with, his childhood of the 1950s. And so, on January 15th, 1974, Happy Days made its debut. The story arc of Happy Days can be split into three distinct parts. For the first two seasons, the focus was on the life of Richie Cunningham, played by Ron Howard and his family. This included Dad, Howard, played by Tom Bosley, Mom, Marion, played by Marion Ross, and little sister Joni, played by the spirited Aaron Moran. Early on, there was actually an older brother named Chuck, but he faded away after a couple of seasons without any real rhyme or reason. And later, it was as if he never existed because the parents referred to having just two children, Richie and Joni. If a scene wasn't in the Cunningham's living room, it was usually at Arnold's drive-in with Richie's friends, Potsy, played by Anson Williams, and Ralph, played by Donnie Most. And of course, there was Arthur Fonzarelli, known as the Fonz. It had marginal ratings, coming in third behind CBS and NBC. But there was something there, and that something was found in the character that actor Henry Winkler brought to life. The public loved the Fonz. He was confident and charismatic. TV had never had a character quite like him before. ABC encouraged Marshall to make the Fonzie character more prominent. By the third season, Fonzie was living in the Cunninghams' apartment above their garage, providing more reasons for him to be at the Cunninghams. The show shifted to focus more on the growth and development of Fonzie, along with the relationship between Fonzie and Richie. Producers also brought in a studio audience to cheer and applaud the Fonz and abandon the single camera format for the traditional three camera setup. It also got a new opening song. Gone was Bill Haley and his Comets Rock Around the Clock in favor of the song Happy Days. The retooling of the show worked. This was the heyday for Happy Days. It was a ratings juggernaut for ABC. Henry Winkler became a star. His character catapulted the show to the top of the charts. They usurped the other stations and took over as the new number one network. In later years, Ron Howard left the show, flipping the focus once again. This was a planned exit as Howard had made Marshall promise that his character would age out accordingly. So, Richie and Ralph left to join the army. Happy Days then focused on Joni and her friends, including newcomer Scott Bayo, who played Chachi, 
Fonzie's younger cousin. The series concluded with Joni and Chachi's wedding. Happy Days was a hit in the 1970s, celebrating the nostalgic 1950s. Its influence permeated culture, both the audience and the writers in Hollywood. It left us with several sitcom archetypes. Howard and Marion as the perfect parents. Richie as the nice guy. Ralph as the jokester. And Fonzie as the ever cool ladies man. Likewise, there's the Chuck Cunningham syndrome. When a character needs to leave the show so he's killed off or he hops on a bus. There's also jumping the shark, which signifies a change in a long-running show, often the beginning of the end. In Happy Days, many think it was when Fonzie actually jumped a shark while water skiing in season eight. Winkler actually did the water skiing, but he didn't actually do the jump. A few hit shows, and some other unsuccessful ones, spun off of Happy Days. Mork and Mindy is one, for example. It's actually a funny story how the character of Mork even came about. Marshall's son wouldn't watch Happy Days because he only wanted space people. He was a Star Wars fan after all. So being the good dad that Marshall was, he created Mork, a silly alien who would visit Fonzie. It was a little weird if we're being honest. But the experiment did two things. Well, three if you count Marshall's son watching the show. It introduced America to comedian Robin Williams, and it set the stage for the hit spin-off, Mork and Mindy. The popular Laverne and Shirley also came from Happy Days, where the pair were once dates for Fonzie and Richie. And then there was Joni Loves Chachi, which followed Joni and Chachi to Chicago. Happy Days brought a little nostalgic Americana to a generation steeped in Vietnam and Watergate. The Cunninghams were safe, tempered with humor and the personification of cool in Fonzie. Tuesday nights in the 1970s belonged to Happy Days. And those Happy Days, immortalized in 255 episodes, live on in reruns and in the social fabric of American television. Thanks for watching Memory Mountain. If you enjoyed this video, please click to subscribe to our channel and hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to tap the notification bell so you'll be one of the first to know when we post our next story looking back over the landscape of Americana.